commission found no evidence such as that a new voters list will be more credible than the existing one. GCOM work plan shows House to House registration will run into 2020. Jaguar renews call for Guyanese to not participate in illegal House to House registration. Caretaker President hints at intentions to ignore CCJ ruling and consequential orders. And in sport, 10 counties expected for fourth annual Carbon School Boys Junior Boxing Tournament. These and more coming up after the break. Stay with us. Secure your property, secure your life, get the best security service from us at KGM Security Services Incorporated. Highly trained armed and unarmed officers at affordable rates. We offer armed mobile patrols, personal security, cash escort, alarm monitoring, quick response units, also rental of executive vehicles with armed guards. 74 Axora Avenue, Bel Air Park, Georgetown. Contact us on 663-3227-699-0084 or 654-1800. KGM Security Services Incorporated, we are your source for security. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Are you invited to that important event but don't know what to wear or frustrated you're wearing the same dress as everyone else? You crave for this exclusive look? Then do just that with dresses from Exclusive Dresses to Impress. Visit Exclusive Dresses to Impress at Giveland Mall. Contact number 6570166. Summer is just around the corner, and this year we're giving you a visa -cation. It's easy. Get your GBTI visa card and travel to your dream summer destinations or shop all you want online. With visa -cation, you get to win prizes when you use your GBTI visa card between June 1st and August 31st. Don't have a visa card? Visit your nearest GBTI branch or go to www.gbtibank.com. GBTI, we see Guyana through your eyes. Champion whole wheat chow mein. It's 100% whole wheat. That's why it's my number one choice. As a mom, you want your kids to eat healthy. At any age, eating healthy is not an option. It's a must. Beyond all limits, being dependable means everything to Mac SA, a company founded in 1957. We produce the highest quality batteries, tailor-made to the needs of our clients. Extreme weather conditions. Mac is one of the leading brands in the world because we offer high performance solutions. Mac is number one in the manufacture of portable power products because we join world-class products with world-class service. Batteries produced by Mac are superior products thanks to the technology employed in their design and the use of the highest quality materials, calcium reinforced with silver. More than 60% of the vehicles assembled in the Andean region for Japanese, American, and European car makers use our batteries. Mac means world-class products, excellent customer service. Mac batteries, world-class energy. The power is yours. You know, since we find a Bataille of Future Shop, me house look nicer than you own. <laughs> How you can afford to buy all them things? Let me tell you. No, me not again. I'm a secret. No, come on. I'm magic. You're too fast. Mind your business. Excuse me, Uncle. Tell me something. 
How credit can afford to buy so much thing from Iron in our walk no way? It's because now we introduce our new discount card. Apply oh. now for your discount card at Tayo Future Shop. Every time you shop using your discount card, your percentage increases. Start from 5% off. Your next purchase, 7% off. Then, 10% off, etc. Until you start getting wholesale and factory price. Check in store for more details. Conditions apply. Let me get me tired discount card. <laughs> Wait, man. Why you do next, man? Buy the whole entire store? Good evening and welcome to this our Thursday, July 25, 2019 edition of News Update. I'm Sandy Ramutar, our top story this evening. A needs assessment mission, NAM of the United Nations, has cast doubt on whether a new voters list would have more credibility than the old list, opposition leader Barra Jaglio has revealed. The caretaker government has been arguing that credible elections can only be held with a new voters list created through house-to-house -house registration, but the United Nations mission's findings has cast doubt over the need for this exercise. Armed with the United Nations report, Jagdi told reporters today that the findings has bolstered the PPP's argument that the government is using house to house registration to delay general elections constitutionally due by September 18 following his successful passage of a no confidence motion. It's on the line. It is the view of the, the needs assessment mission that there is no certainty that a new voters list will have more credibility than the current list and that stakeholders would trust it more. Furthermore, any list created close to the elections would likely be criticized as politically motivated. And this report was issued 7th, 11th of May, 2018. This is an independent body that came to Guyana, the United Nations, and issued this report since then. So you have with you three pieces of documents that will show that the timeline and, and the, an international assessment of the situation and how that uh, and the illegality of this exercise, how it conflicts with the with the decision of the court. Among the objectives of the mission undertaken from May 7 through 11 last year upon the request of GCOM was to assess the political environment in Guyana and the legal and institutional framework governing the electoral process. Regarding the list, the UN mission found that the main challenge to the voters list is the removal of dead persons and Guyanese who have migrated. The opposition has argued that the claims and objections period can correct this. The Chief Elections Officer has also said that this can be done and a list can be produced to have credible elections. During claims and objections, the names of dead persons can be removed from the list, while eligible voters who are not on the list can register, while persons can effect change of names and addresses. Opposition leader Bar Jagdu has urged persons not to be afraid to reveal the illegal house to house registration process, noting that thousands of persons cannot be charged for negating the process. Opposition leader Barat Jagdu has flagged the caretaker government for purposely embarking on house-to-house -house registration. He said the administration has plunged into panic mode because it is afraid to face the polls. Jagdu accused the administration of frustrating the decision of the Carbon Court of Justice in pursuit of house-to-house -house registration. The opposition leader cautioned that the information generated via the house-to-house -house registration process will be scrapped. And especially they can force you to participate in an act that as far as we are concerned is illegal and that should they try to strong arm people then please notify us so we can take legal action. I want to ask the Commissioner of Police to ensure that the police are not part of this activity, complicit activity to bully people into registering. Jagdu, armed with GCOM's work plan for house-to-house -house registration, explained that based on the information, the exercise will go into 2020, thus leading to a breach of the Constitution. And you will see that it has 290 days for house-to-house -house registration at the top here. This is a document produced by the Secretariat and shared by Mr. Lowenfield with the Commission. And it has 200 and 90 days and it was supposed to start 
in, in somewhere around the third month of the year, March, and conclude in, at the end of the year. That is end 2019. Now, you will go down this list and you will see that they're already, even from the timeline laid out here, when they should start house-to-house -house registration, they have been late on that, so they were delayed by one month. It was supposed to start in June, and it's now July. So you have to add to this timeline here one month. That takes us into end January 20. He reiterated that the party will not be complicit in an illegal act that undermines the constitution. Jagda reminded that the extension of the time frame for elections can only be done so through the support of the opposition party. The opposition leader is adamant that the party will not support to extend the timeline for the holding of regional and general elections. Hours after opposition member Gail Tishir accused the president of acting in bad faith, the opposition leader was invited to a meeting contemplated with the president tomorrow on the appointment of a new chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission. Talks are expected to resume tomorrow between President David Granger and leader of the opposition Bharat Jagdeo for discussions on the appointment of a chairperson for the Ghana Elections Commission. The invitation came hours after opposition member Gail Tishira accused the president of acting in bad faith after the one week elapsed since the two sides met to discuss the appointment of a new chairman. President Granger had indicated that he has found four out of the five candidates shortlisted from the nominees submitted by the leader of the opposition not unacceptable. I received a call last night after Gail Tishera mentioned that we had not heard from the government since last Thursday when the four names were submitted to them. And um, I got a call from Harmon saying to me that a meeting is contemplated for some time tomorrow with the president. So that's where we are on that matter. Jagu has submitted an additional four names for consideration as the hammering out of names of persons continues until the arrival of six. The teams are expected to meet regularly until a final list of six nominees not unacceptable to the president are sorted, which the leader of the opposition will present to President Granger and from which the president would choose one person to be named as chairman. Jagdeo nominees include environmentalist Anit Arjun Martins, retired Justice of Appeal B.S. Roy, private sector chairman Jerry Gavaya, retired Major General Joseph Singh, attorney Kashir Khan, former magistrate Krishnadat Persaud, Lawrence Latman Singh, retired Major General Norman McLean, Onasi Lafleur, public sector executive Ramesh Duku, and retired Judge William Ramlal. Caretaker President David Granger has come out saying that it is not the responsibility of the court to lay down timelines for the holding of general and regional elections, an indication that he does not intend to honor the ruling of the Caribbean Court of Justice. Caretaker President David Granger told members of the media and the private sector that the courts have no power to pronounce on a date for the holding of general and regional elections. With that, Granger noted that the Caribbean Court of Justice has not made any coercive orders. Therefore, the government is not in contravention of the orders of the court or the Constitution. It would not therefore be right for the court by the issuance of coercive orders or detailed directives to presume to instruct these bodies on how they must act and therefore preempt the performance by them of their constitutional responsibility. Granger further noted that the role of the court lies solely on ensuring the constitution is abided by, not to rule on determining a date for elections. It is not, for example, the role of the court to establish a date on or by which the elections must be held or to lay down timelines and deadlines that, in principle, are the preserve of political actors guided by constitutional imperatives. 
Granger further stressed that it is imperative that a cleanse voters list be established as there are countless Guyanese eligible to be on the list, not on the list. He reiterated the call for house-to-house -house registration to take place to help with the process. However, opposition officials said that the president seems to be deliberately misinterpreting the court's ruling. One official said that the court needed not to set any timelines since Article 106 of the Guyana Constitution has already set out those timelines as three months after a no-confidence motion is validly passed. The Caribbean Court of Justice on June 18 ruled that a no-confidence motion was validly passed and pointed to the consequences as outlined in Article 106 of the Constitution. Private sector and union officials who attended the press briefing described the president's pronouncement as worrying. But uh, what I would say is that we obviously saw the Chief Justice give a clarification to the press and in that clarification she said that uh, elections should be must be held by September 2018 so that is something that conflicted with what the president said because he said the courts can't say or fire, fire. and for that you worry you it causes some concern because there's two conflicting interpretations we were left like halfway we were like shocked because we, we came here with the expectation that we were going to be able to ask questions and to have some other issues being clarified. The thing is, uh, we represent uh, quite a lot of this population and our members, they're asking questions. And if we have no answers to give them, then you can imagine what is going to happen. Reporting from TV News Update, LaShawna Gomes, Cornelius. People's Progressive Party presidential candidate Irfan Ali has pledged to resuscitate the ailing mining sector after getting first-hand look at the operations and a barrage of complaints from miners. People's Progressive Party presidential candidate Irfan Ali has raised concern about the rapid state of decline in the mining sector. Ali said the decline came as a result of the poor government policies with no invention in infrastructure, which is leading to higher costs of transport and increased costs of production. He became aware of the issue after sourcing feedback from miners and checking in with operations within the mining sector. He learned from miners that the burdensome taxes have been negatively affecting recapitalization and increased transactional cost. It was brought to his attention that there are leakages and favoritism in the distribution of mining properties and claims. To ensure the industry revives, $2 billion will be pumped into the support of hinterland roads annually to support easier transport for mining, forestry and communities. The party plans to remove value-added tax on hinterland travel and freight, as well as machinery and equipment. It also intends to remove the sliding scale and replace it with 2% final tax, in addition to removing the fee required for the sale of gold. More news coming up after these messages. Stay with us. Let FiberTech help you to renovate, refresh and redecorate your kitchen. Spice up your kitchen with decorative colors, finishes and accessories. Choose from an array of designs and beautiful granite colors that are blended to suit your choice. FiberTech Lifetime Kitchen is durable, thermite free and water resistant. Enjoy one year factory warranty along with our after sale service. So come on in and let us help you choose wisely. Did you know almost one third of deaths in Guyana are heart related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. BM Soat Auto Sales presents Vehicle Leasing. Trade in, in with the old, out with the new. Low down payment deals as low as 500000 Duty-free deals for anyone with a duty-free concession. 5% cash back. Buy any vehicle cash and get 5% off instantly. Visit our showroom for more info or call 231-8451 or visit our Facebook page, BM Soat Auto Sales. Introducing the new Softex, Softex toilet, toilet tissue, tissue, now available across Guyana. 
Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle, soft to, and every gentle touch. to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by B Pats Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The, the choice, choice is clear. clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. Your one-stop decor solution for gala dinners, weddings, birthdays, cocktail functions, backdrops, props, and more. Check out exclusive decor design, Ground Floor City Mall. We have a wide variety to suit your stylish seating and table decor, exclusive centerpieces, colorful maro, and much more. Working with a small budget? No problem. We've got you covered. Call 225-4434 or 657-0166. We listen, we create, you enjoy. It happens. Your septic tank is full. All the waste from your toilet goes into your septic tank through the sewage line. When your tank is full, the two most common indicators are an overflowing tank and an overflowing toilet. It is recommended that Sivan's Waste Management empty your septic tank every two to three years to avoid any embarrassment. And before you can say, shh, it's gone. Call Sivan's Waste Management today at 218-1455 or 218-1156. Gaffors has been corrugating and exporting roofing sheets to all Caribbean countries since 1973. Gaffors was first to corrugate sheets, the first to introduce alusing sheets in Guyana, the first to introduce pre-painted roofing sheets in Guyana, the first to introduce ripple and non-ripple design corrugated sheets, the first to introduce clay tile and non-clay tile corrugated sheets, and the first to introduce curved sheets. At Houston, contact Sohan on telephone number 225-6007. He'll give you all the advice you require, including what fasteners and what gauge you will need. With 42 years' experience in manufacturing corrugated roofing sheets, you can rest assured that Gaffers will supply you with quality products and at competitive prices. Get corrugated roofing sheets also from branches in Rose Hall, Bedford Acting, Nimes, Perica, Kanji, and Land of Canaan. Gaffoos, a name you can trust. The People's Progressive Party has warned the caretaker government that it will be held liable if it intends to spend outside of the routine functioning of its administration. During a news conference today, opposition leader Mara Jagdu said the People's Progressive Party has taken note of the frequent travel of ministers to government outreaches across the country. He warned the interim administration that the outreaches are inconsistent with the functions of acting in a caretaker capacity. Jagdu made it categorically clear that officials accused of spending taxpayers' dollars on things other than routine functions will be held culpable. Any minister who goes on these activities that are not consistent with routine functioning of the government or makes any expenditure and the technical officers who approve these expenditures will have to repay the money because we're going to take legal action against any minister and all of the technical officers who approve these expenses. We will either surcharge them or make it uh, or, uh, a charge against the state's obligation to them. After the government toppled the VADA confidence motion on December 21, the administration immediately moved into overdrive and began fanning out the communities across the country. Prior to the December 21 confidence motion, there were limited outreaches since the coalition won the 2015 general and regional elections. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, has received some 105 complaints of noise nuisance so far for the year, according to Director Dr. Vincent Adams. iNews Ghana reported this already represents an increase of 35% compared to the 156 complaints the agency acted upon last year. Previously, reports suggested that the Ghana Police Force received some 300 complaints in 2018. Noise nuisance continues to be a persuasive problem in Guyana. Last year, several police officers underwent training to deal with this issue, which is a crime under the Summary Jurisdiction Offences Act. Today, another batch of officers began similar training. 
in October. Yet another group of ranks will be trained as the police force amplifies its efforts to clamp down on the issue. While prosecution of this crime has been low, companies are now being warned that their licenses can be revoked if they are guilty of noise nuisance. The warning was sounded by Public Security Minister Kamra Dramjadan during the opening of the training program this morning at the Police Training College, Tiflari. The Office of Professional Responsibilities Investigation into alleged corruption allegations within the Ghana Police Force involving one of its senior heads is near completion. This is according to the head of the OPR, Harlal Makanlal. Following several weeks of intense investigation into dam and corruption allegations against several ranks within the Guyana Police Force, the Office of Professional Responsibility is close to tying up its findings on the matter. Well, near completion. That's what I mean. Something next week. Head of the Office of Professional Responsibility, Haralal Makanlal. The probe was launched after numerous corruption claims against Deputy Commissioner Lyndon Alves and several junior ranks had surfaced in the news. One of the allegations points to Deputy Commissioner Alves using his influence during his tenure as then commander of B Division to protect rogue cops. Another is his reported influence to prevent a relative of his who was involved in a vehicular accident from being charged and prosecuted. A four-year-old child had died from that accident. The relative was arrested and placed on $20,000 station bail since two years ago. The woman is yet to be charged. Along with that, the names of four other ranks were pointed out as being a part of a network with criminals who wrecked havoc in Burbies in recent months. Another incriminating piece of evidence is that the phone numbers of the very ranks were also found in the cellular phone contact list and the call logs of now dead bandit Kelvin Kelly Shivgobin. Shivgobin was killed by police in Blackbush Polder area during a shootout with law enforcement. Recently, Commissioner Leslie James informed the media if the ranks are found guilty of misconduct, they will not be condoned within the Ghana police force. Efforts to further contact the commissioner today on the matter proved futile. Reporting from TV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. We tell you now that a 30-year-old lab technician formerly attached to the Saudi public hospital Essipipo Coast Region 2 was yesterday charged for stealing medical supplies from the health facility which he sold to a private pharmacy. Mohammed Khan of Lot 50 Plantation Bell Essipipo Coast was arrested by the police and then taken to the Anna Regina Magistrates Court where he pleaded guilty to the crime and was fined $25,000 for the act. Reports are that Mohammed Khan of Lot 50 Plantation Bell Essequibo Coast stole 21 packs of dengue test, 100 microscope slides, one bottle of anti-A, one bottle of anti-B, one bottle of anti-D medications, among other medicinal drugs and medical supplies from the above-mentioned hospital. After committing the act, he reportedly took the items to a retired pharmacist who in turn sold them to a pharmacy. I News reported that it was the region's coordinator of health strategy who made the discovery and immediately reported the matter to the police on Tuesday. Khan was arrested on the same day. The stolen items along with Khan were handed over to the investigating ranks. Less than 24 hours after his arrest, he made his court appearance. He was slapped with the offense of simple larceny committed on the public health ministry. He pleaded guilty to the charge and was then fined $25,000 by Magistrate Esther Sam. Here is Rajesh Lakhan with this week's What Do People Say? Since the Caribbean Court of Justice ruled that a no-confidence motion was passed and elections must be held in three months, our question is, should the president provide a date for election now? Let's hear what the people had to say. As an ordinary citizen, I believe that the rule of law should be respected, especially by those who are in a particular office, who hold those offices, because when you're in that office, you set an example, you set a precedent to the people who look up to you. Um, and if you don't follow the ruling of a court, then what does that say to us, the ordinary people? For me, it kind of smacks of um, when we break the law, we are forced, so we have to, we have no choice but to respect the law. Whatever the law says, 
we have to go to jail or we got to pay a fine or we got to do those things. And, um, so it, to me, it should be respected um, and followed because our politicians are in office and they're supposed to be setting an example for us to follow. Um, it says that there is a difference when you have power and when you don't have power. When you have power, you have the opportunity to break the law, to disrespect the law. When you don't have power and you're an ordinary man, you, you, ha you have to face the consequences. So th that's just what I think. Tell you the truth, I fed up. Because I fed up when I have to turn on the, the radio or the television and know that, oh God, these people still with the CCJ thing or this, um, this no confidence motion or with this um what you call it the the the, the um gcom chairman and this no this thing should have done stop already okay it's in the constitution and we gotta go by the con the government gotta go by the constitution okay but right now we need to put it a stop we had enough of this let's just do what we have to do and whoever win that's it we have to still live we still have to work and just let the country go ahead because this is just slowing up Guyana. Mm. It's pretty straightforward. 33 is a majority than 32. So initially the decision was straightforward. There is no simple majority and absolute majority. There's, those words are not in the constitution. Well, if he is going to follow the CCJ ruling, he should do the elections in three months. Well, the president is not the one who is supposed to announce the election. The, the president's duty here is to see that the, the GCOM have a chairman. That in the president's time, he been appoint in the coalition, then they appoint somebody to Jack Dio and he choose. He didn't refuse, he choose. But why the president now is running away from the facts? That why when Jack Dio choose somebody, you don't want it. This is not the constitutional law. And when, when they was fighting against and making things with the Robert R. time, we choose. The other positive party choose and the election go on and then when everybody feel good about it. But no, if you for the people, you're supposed to choose a person that the opposition give to you and win them again. Let the country move forward. Yeah, but you're not doing so, that means you're fair. If you for the people, then you're fair. You're fair the people then. Because more you do things, is more you're fair in the people. If you ain't take none of the opposition list, I feel that they're putting themselves to have a demote out of the seat. This is the only way. Or within the three month period. Yes. Or even a month, I mean, find nobody. I think they feel to myself, they feel that the, the law should take it arms into the high court or whatever, and them should be step out. And let a, a election, let the law fix an election. And the court fix the election. And who win, take it, yeah. For MTV News Update, I'm Rajesh Lakan. We now join Celine Griffith with today's health tip. Blood poisoning is a serious infection. It occurs when bacteria are in the bloodstream. Despite its name, the infection has nothing to do with poison. Although not a medical term, blood poisoning is used to describe bacteremia, septicemia, or sepsis. Still, the name sounds dangerous and for good reason. Sepsis is a serious, potentially fatal infection, and blood poisoning can progress to sepsis rapidly. Causes Blood poisoning occurs when bacteria causing infection in another part of your body enters your bloodstream. The presence of bacteria in the blood is referred to as bacteremia or septicemia. The terms septicemia and sepsis are often used interchangeably, though technically they are not quite the same. 
Septicemia, the state of having bacteria in your blood, can lead to sepsis. Sepsis is a severe and often life-threatening state of infection if it is left untreated. However, any type of infection, whether bacterial, fungal, or viral, can cause sepsis, and these infectious agents do not necessarily need to be in a person's bloodstream to bring about sepsis. Some common causes of infections that can cause sepsis include abdominal infection, an infected insect bite, central line infections such as from a dialysis or chemotherapy catheter, dental extractions or infected teeth, Exposure of a covered wound to bacteria during surgical recovery or not changing a surgical bandage frequently enough. Exposure of any open wound to the environment. Infection by drug-resistant bacteria. A kidney or urinary tract infection. Pneumonia and skin infection. Symptoms. The symptoms of blood poisoning include chills, moderate or high fever, weakness, rapid breathing, increased heart rate or palpitations, paleness of the skin, especially in the face, red spots on the skin, purple bruises, shock, little to no urine production, organ failure. Blood poisoning can lead to respiratory distress syndrome and septic shock. If the condition is not treated right away, these complications can lead to death. Prevention. The best way to prevent blood poisoning is to treat and prevent infections. It is also important to prevent any open wounds from becoming infected in the first place with proper cleaning and bandaging. If you've had surgery, your doctor will likely prescribe an antibiotic as a precautionary measure against infections. Call your doctor if you suspect you have an infection and avoid places where you are likely to encounter bacteria, viruses or fungi if you are prone to infection. Coming up after the break, MTV's Sports Update and more. Stay with us. Beeson Windows and Doors, fully equipped to handle all your commercial projects. Whether you're constructing a small or large commercial building, residential property, or just upgrading your home, they got you covered. Beeson Windows and Doors, providing unmatched quality windows for your home, office, and commercial building. Located at 1228 Eccles Industrial Site. For more information, call 662-4197 or 226-1292. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens. Available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. What good is history if you never change? And what good is change if it doesn't make you better? At Valvoline, for the last 150 years, we've been doing just that. Relentlessly pursuing innovation for your engine. Backed up not just by science, but by the hands-on expertise that drives everything we do. Valvoline, 150 years under the hood. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Elections Commission will commence house-to-house -house registration in your area soon. You must register if you are a Guyanese citizen by birth, descent, naturalization, or registration. 
14 years and older by the 31st of October 2019, a citizen of a Commonwealth country living in Guyana for a period of no less than one year preceding the qualifying date. If you were previously registered, you will need to register again. Look out for GCOM. Make it your responsibility to get registered. For more information, contact GCOM on 225-0277-9 or 223-9653. Email pro at gcom.org.gy. Contact the nearest GCOM registration office or visit our website, www.gcom.org.gy. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. <gasps> this is amazing! I love your tiles. Make an impression with the finest tiles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various tiles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our tiles are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our locations to get the best in tiles. Lens, our product, your creation. Over the years, ISG has been providing all sectors across Guyana with quality products and outstanding customer service. Proud distributor of NP and Ultra lubricants, engineered for tropical conditions. International trucks and parts, leading the change. SEM machinery, a Caterpillar brand, SKF bearings and mounted products, NAPA batteries, Tide power generators. Discover the greatest source of power. Industrial supply of Guyana Inc., the best opportunity to make the right choice. Welcome to MTV's Sports Update. England's test against Ireland hangs in the balance despite night watch one Jack Leach making 92 at Lourdes. Leach's second wicket stand at 145 with Jason Roy, who hit 72, logged to have nullified the damage of England being 85 all out in their first innings. But Leach missing out and becoming the first England night watchman to make a test century was part of a collapse of 423 and 777. At 248 for 8, England were just 126 ahead only for Sam Curran to launch an audacious counter-attack of 37 from 21 balls. With Stuart Broad also batting to 21 not out, England had reached 303 for 9, a lead of 181 when the threat of lightning and then rain ended the second day's play. It sets up an intriguing final when Ireland playing in only their third test will have the opportunity to pull off one of the greatest shocks of all time. Even if England do not add any further runs on Friday morning, the chase on a slow pitch and in conditions offering movement will be a tricky one. Still, should England's bowlers save them once more, it will not make the disappointment of such a substantive performance just a week before the Ashes begin. The Asian County of Rupiste will for the first time have a home of football courtesy of 30-year-old Lan Lee signed earlier this week between the Ghana Football Federation and the Mayan Tong Kong's Love New Amsterdam. The lease signed at the municipality building by President of the GFF Wayne Ford and the New Amsterdam's Mayor Winifred Haywood will see the construction of a football facility at Vryman's Irvine, New Amsterdam. Ford disclosed that the facility will be funded under the FIFA Forward Programme as part of the GFF's overall strategic plan. When complete, the venue will be used to house the Academy Training Centre, Elite Referees Programme, along with other national development and capacity building programmes. Ford said the next step will be the presentation and approval of the conceptual design to and by the BFA members before construction commences. This is the third land identified and acquired for football development by the GFF. It is the plan of the GFF to acquire land across Guyana to house football development initiatives. Chelsea Lee, Report of MTV, Sport Update. Two Premier League footballers have been involved in a carjacking attempt by an armed gang in a London street. Arsenal players Mesut Ozil and Seed Kolasinat were targeted, the club confirmed, but both escaped uninjured. 
Footage on social media appears to show Colors in act chasing the robbers in Platts Lane near Golden Green at about 17 hours BST. Arsenal said in a statement, we have been in contact with both players and they are fine. In a video that has been circulated on social media, fullback Kalosunak is seen fighting off two men who were wielding knives. The player can be seen jumping out on a vehicle to confront the masked men who had pulled alongside the car on mopeds. In the footage, both carjackers were seen to be armed and were fined brandishing knives at 26-year-old Kalosunak. A spokesman for the Metropolitan Police said it was reported that suspects on motorbikes had attempted to rob a man who was driving a car. The driver, along with his passenger, managed to get away unharmed and travelled to a restaurant in Golden Screen where they were spoken by by officers. There have been no arrests so far. Collison Act and middle fielder Ozil are not the first footballers to be targeted on London's road. In 2016, then West Ham striker Andy Carroll was threatened at gunpoint on his way home from training. The Ghana Boxing Association's fourth annual Carbon School Boys Junior Boxing Tournament is set to punch off on August 16 at the Cliff Anderson Sports Hall and President of the GBA Steve Nilville has disclosed 10 countries are expected to participate. Ninval said a number of countries are still displaying an interest even though the deadline has passed. Well, we have a number of countries that have indicated their interest to participate. Um, but what has happened is that in the Caribbean, we're very cavalier as it relates to reaching deadlines and so forth. So even though we would have um, had a deadline for registration, that deadline has passed. But being a Caribbean person and dealing with the Caribbean years in, years out, we understand that a lot of countries were coming at the last moment. It was disclosed that the 10 countries are expected to participate, which is a huge improvement as compared to the last three tournaments. Ninval reminded that Guyana's squad of boxers is currently undergoing encampment three days a week at the National Gymnasium and is expected to run until the commencement of the tournament. He also mentioned that the G GBA is considering renaming the tournament after an amateur boxer. And um, we are right now toying with the idea of changing the name from the Caribbean School Boys and Juniors to naming it after one of our boxers, amateur boxers who have done human service to this country. The fourth annual Caribbean School Boys Junior Boxing Tournament is set to punch off on August 16 to August 18 at the Cliff Anderson Sports Hall with fights starting from 18 hours each night. Chelsea Lee, Robert of MTV, Sports Update. Guyana's 42-member contingent began its campaign at the 18th edition of the Pan American Games in Lima, Peru earlier today, with Guyana's squash players kicking off things off in a singles event where they both succumbed 1-3 to Chile. Guyana squash players Ashley Khalil and Mary Fungafat were set to be featured in the singles category where Fungafat faced Chilean Maria Arias Pinto from 9 hours and succumbed 1-3. Meanwhile, Khalil clashed with Giselle Castillo at the same time where she also lost 1-3. The doubles which will be Khalil and Taylor Fernandes will kick off tomorrow. It was disclosed that there are just eight women's doubles teams which meant if Guyana won the first match, the country would be guaranteed at least a bronze medal and the team segment is set for Sunday. Rugby, table tennis, swimming, taekwondo, badminton, boxing and track and field are the other disciplines being represented in by Guyana. The Panam Games which began in 1951 and are held every four Four years saw participation from Guyana for 15 editions of the Games, with them meddling 18 medals in total. However, Guyana has not won a medal in the Games since 2015. Chelsea Lee, your Board of MTV, Sports Update. The FINA World Aquatic Championship saw Guyanese swimmers Andrew Fuller and Leon Satin secured new personal best times in Gunjuju, South Korea, yesterday. Fowler registered 54.72 seconds, coming in third in the 100-meter freestyle yesterday, but was still unable to advance to the semifinals. His personal best was 56.33 seconds. He is yet to compete in the 50-meter freestyle on July 27. Seaton secured a time of 28.54 seconds in 50 meters butterfly, resetting his previous time of 28.73 seconds. He finished second, but his recorded time was 77th out of a list of 94. Seaton's final event, the 50-meter backstroke, has been set for July. 27. The other Guyanese swimmer participating in the event is Olympian Jamila San Mugan, who is set to compete in the 50 meter butterfly and freestyle. Chelsea Lee, Report of MTV, Sports Update. More news after the break. Stay with us. 
Ready to ride away a winner on a brand new motorcycle? With Ultra Lubricants, Oil & Go, it's so easy. Purchase any Ultra Lubricants at an authorized dealer. Get your coupon, fill it out, drop it in the box, and you can be one of six lucky Ultra winners to ride off on a bike. And here's the secret tip. Get two chances to win when you purchase Ultra Power Max 4T. Ride away a winner. Oil & Go with Ultra Lubricants. Promotion runs from 1st of March to the 31st of August. Conditions apply. See press and Facebook for details. Ultra Lubricant, distributed by Industrial Supply of Guyana, Inc. and available nationwide. Welcome back, here's Silver MTV's news update. Now for some news in the region. Puerto Rico's Governor Ricardo Rossello has announced his resignation after days of mass street protests in the U.S. territory. Mr. Marcello, who had only and son insisted he would stay on, said he should continue working until August 2 to allow an orderly transition. He has been at the center of a group ex meeting scandal that has already led two top officials to resign. The leaked messages revealed sexist, pro-frame and homophobic comments. The chart, which contained 880 pages of exchanges between the governor and 11 male allies, was leaked on July 13 and led to days of protest outside the governor's mansion in San Juan. On the international scene, the U.S. federal government is to resume executing death row inmates after a 16-year hiatus the Justice Department has announced. Attorney General William Barr said in a statement he had directed the Bureau of Prisons BOP to schedule the executions of five inmates. Mr. Barr said the five had been convicted of murders or rapes of children or the elderly. The executions have been scheduled for December 2019 and January 2020. The announcement lifts a what was an informal memorandum on the federal death penalty since the 2003 execution of Louis Jones Jr., a 53-year-old engulfed Warren veteran for the kidnap and murder of 19-year-old soldier Travis Joy McBride. And that has brought us to the end of regional and international news. Now let's take a look at the Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 8 through 5. Let's now turn our attention to the Demar Harbour Bridge and the Barbies River Bridge schedules. That's a wrap on today's broadcast. Before we go, here's a reminder of our top stories. UN mission found no evidence to suggest a new voters list will be more credible than the existing one. GCOM work plan shows house to house registration will run into 2020. JAG do renews call for Guyanese to not participate in legal house to house registration. Caretaker President hints at intentions to ignore CCTA ruling and consequential orders. And in sport, 10 countries expected a fourth annual Carbon Schoolboys Junior Boxing Tournament. Cattle rebroadcast at 23 hours today and at 6 hours 30 tomorrow. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Sani Ramutar. Have a good night.